Good morning, Interweb Answers with Artifexian. As always, if you haven't watched the last video, none of this would make sense, so go check that out. While I love the channel, I'm afraid that you got plant color wrong. Your reasoning is based on the idea that the dominating factor determining the color of plants is the color of the light of their home star. Nope, this is not the way it works on Earth. So a couple of you left comments to this effect, and you're all correct, but you kind of have missed the point a little bit, and it's a really important point I'd like to emphasize. I'm not a science channel, like it's not my job to describe the state of the earth the way it is. My job is to take science and extrapolate world building frameworks from it. And they're two very different things. So if I were a science channel, I'd say something like, plants on earth are green because, well, we don't really know, but we think it might just be luck, which is deeply unsatisfactory in the world building sense. So then the question to ask is, is there anything we observe that we can extrapolate from? Well, we observe that plants on Earth are green, and we observe that the peak output color of the sun is green. So there is one scenario that's stable. Plant color equals peak stellar output. Take it and apply it to your worlds. That's not me making any sort of comment on whether or not that is why plants on Earth are green, merely that is a scenario that is plausible that you can take and apply to fictional worlds. Same thing with plants that are the complement to the stellar output. We know that in the past there have been sort of pinkish, purplish organisms. Again, that's another stable scenario that you can apply to your worlds. And if you go back and listen to that particular plant color bit, you'll notice the amount of times I say things like might and could and may. I make no declarative statement to say that this is exactly why plants on Earth are the color they are. All I'm saying is that this, these are possible scenarios for different plant colors, if, if that makes sense. In your animation where you show skies around different stars, is the star growing due to the closeness the planet has to be in order to be habitable? Yes, yes indeed, you are correct, well spotted. What happens to the color of the plant life if we have changing sky slash star color? Like you mentioned with the double star system, for example. Okay, so in the case of the double star system, the two stars would eclipse each other at such a rate that it wouldn't really be advantageous for the plants to change their color. So what I think you should do in this scenario is figure out the color the plants could be under each of the stars, and then assume that under both of the stars at the same time, the color will be somewhere between those two extremes. You wanna figure out the color, there's a calculator in the description. As vegetation, or at least deciduous trees, have several pigments for the different seasons, would it be too unlikely for vegetation around a somewhat regular variable star to develop a system that allows it to change pigments depending on the amount of radiation emitted by that star? It's not too unlikely, but there are a couple of problems with it. Big one is that variable stars, that is non-main sequence stars that vary, a group that we call variable stars, aren't great candidates to host habitable planets. But that said, loads of people speculate that in Game of Thrones, the reason why the seasons are all bonkers is because of a variable star. So if it works for them, it could work for you. Assuming you're okay with that, yeah, you could just say that your star varies at such a rate that it would be advantageous for your plants to change color. Maybe the star varies its output on the order of weeks or months, say. Why can't the black plants just have a generation die off and germinate the seeds with the blast similar to a forest fire? This question is in reference to the scenario I proposed at the end of the last video where, where I say that planets around uh, low mass Flare stars will likely feature black plants and those plants will likely have early warning systems so that they can detect and then hide from massive solar flare. So the idea of the solar flare acting kind of like a forest fire is actually a really cool idea, but just like the previous two questions, I wonder if there'd be a problem of rate. Like how often do flare stars flare? If they flare at a generational sort of rate, then sure, it works. If they flare every five minutes or whatever, then it's not gonna work. So that's the thing you could totally look into. Why do your graphics look like those from Kurzgesagt? So Kurzgesagt, for anyone who doesn't know, is this massive educational channel. They're really great. And both Kurzgesagt and I use a type of modern aesthetic uh, known as flat design. And if you deal with flat design, you kind of end up with things looking pretty similar because the whole shtick with flat design is that you're only able to use um, like three or four shapes and that's it and it's all 2D. But the really cool thing is I think flat design is kind of sort of going out of fashion a little bit. Like Kurzgesagt have made moves to kind of move into 3D. You'll see them use isometric projections more and more. And I kind of feel like I want to move away from flat design as well. So the better I get at making these videos, the more I kind of want to push things towards a like journey, 
Alto's Adventure, Monument Valley sort of aesthetic, which in my head feels like flat design, but with blurs and gradients, so like a softer flat design. That is a thing I would like to explore. I noticed you're using American spellings, example color. Any reason? It's rather off-putting. So I actually agree it is kind of off-putting, especially because I'm an Irish person. But so what's happened here is that I spend a lot of time talking to American people in via the medium of text. And I've kind of adopted this sort of Hiberno-American way of spelling, which is neither here nor there and it's an entire mess. So some days color is spelt with an O, other days color is spelt with a U. It just depends on what my neurons are doing on those particular days. It's I agree, it's a disaster. <laughs> Anyways, that was that. Thank you so much for your cues. I hope you enjoyed my A's. Until next time, Edgar out.